Welcome back, everyone, to a new episode of Big Red Size Pods. This week, we're going to be going over one of my uh, Armadillidium species, the Armadillidium maculatum, the zebra isopods. Uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how I take care of them and uh, how I uh, have their setup. Let's get to it. Let's check out these isopods. So everyone, these are my Armadillidium maculatum species uh, set up. I'm sure you guys have seen this in a couple of my videos before, the zebra isopod. Now these ones are extremely easy Armadillidium species to take care of. Now I was told they bred like crazy, but I didn't realize how crazy they bred until I actually got them myself. Now some people have a hard time breeding these guys where I did not. Um, I basically took care of them any other way I would take care of any other species. I mean, I got a similar setup. I think I showed you guys how I set this container up in one of my recent videos. So if you want to go take a look at that, uh, leave a link below. But, um, yeah, um, these are probably the quickest breeding of the Armadillidium species next to... I'd say Armadillidium jastroi would be the second quickest species to breed, which uh, lay multiple babies in one clutch, or one uh, one egg laying, laying cycle, I guess you'd say. Yeah, they're, these are quite a beautiful species, uh, quite prolific, and quite hungry, as you can see. They just love to mow down. Um, I don't do anything too specific to try to take care of these guys. I mean, you do want a moisture gradient with the wet side and the dry side, just like almost all the other uh, uh, isopods I keep. Um, they do prefer vegetables over protein. Uh, well, I wouldn't say over protein, so... Parcelli are known for liking the protein, and same with the Cubaris, so they really like their pro protein. But the Armadillidium are known for being more of a vegetable lovers. Uh, as you can see this week, I gave them potatoes, and they don't seem to be too keen on it. I did actually have a Parcellio species this week that was really into the, the potatoes. Yeah. But you can see they're just going away, munching around. Um, like I said, these are super easy. Uh, species to take care of. Uh, they basically just thrive in any situation. Um, I would suggest having a uh, slight moisture. Uh, I wouldn't have it too high in moisture level. Uh, you want it just a slight moisture level, just kind of like a normal one. You don't want to overwater it or anything or have it. I just like to water the one section over here. Maybe put a little bit extra to have it a little bit moist everywhere else, but you don't want to have it soaking wet and you don't want it too dry. I find that the Armadillidium species don't tend to like it when it's too terribly dry or too terribly moist. They like it to be a nice gradient in between both. Um, I also find that this species in particular, they do like to hide. Uh, if I flip up this log here, I'm sure we'll find hundreds of more. Yep, so these ones um, prefer to hide in the dark. Some of the Armadillidium species don't prefer to hide as much as these do. But uh, these ones tend to hide underneath. If I pick up this piece here too, yeah, you're going to see hundreds under there. I'm not too sure why. Most of them don't prefer the ground as much as this species does. But these guys really do prefer... Uh, laying up against the ground uh, for some reason. Maybe they feel more safe, uh, more secure, knowing that they're near the ground. And maybe it's easier for them to give birth to their young into the soil. Maybe that's why they like it. I'm not too sure. Um, and as a species for cleanup crew, um, I guess you could suggest them as a decent cleanup crew. I don't know how well they would do 
with waste management, as in getting rid of the fecal matter or the messes after eating for your reptiles or amphibians. I know these guys are not going to be any threat to your, um, your pets whatsoever. And I know that they're not going to harm them in any way by them eating them. Uh, and these isopods are definitely prolific enough to breed quite a bit so that they won't get all eaten by your, your reptiles or amphibians. Um, but at the same time, I don't know if their appetite is high enough for waste management. I do know that they do like to eat and they are quite prolific. So that makes me believe that they would be good cleanup crew for one of your species. But at the same time, I'm not too sure if they would clean up everything like um, one of the other species like the Procellia would. Uh, in my opinion, I would not use an Armandalidium species because there's so many other ones that are better. But if you want something that just looks beautiful and you know is going to be able to um, at least take care of some of it and clean up um, while still looking beautiful, like there's a perfect example right there. These are quite a beautiful isopod. They got beautiful markings. Some of them have stripes that are solid and some are patchy like this one. Here's a more solid one over here. Um, you can't go wrong with the uh, maculatum of the zebras. They're just a beautiful isopod. So many different um, color variations with some of the darker ones like the one you see right here. That guy right there, he's quite dark in comparison to some of the other ones. And then you got ones like this guy over here that is just speckled right next to a striped guy. So they are beautiful. So if you wanted to keep them in there and then have something to look at at the same time, this is probably a pretty good species, uh, considering that they're not going to cause any problems with uh, your reptiles or whatnot. Now, um, other than that, I, can't see too much of a benefit using them in that type of situation but as a hobbyist uh, I really like these species they're quite beautiful quite prolific which is really nice to have you don't want to be spending money on an isopod and then have them all die you're gonna want them to be around you're gonna want to feed them you're gonna want to look at them which you can with these guys like I have already you can take them pick up the logs take a look at underneath or the bark I should say Take a look underneath, they're not gonna be too mad. I wanna spill their food, they might be a little bit mad about that. But other than that, I could probably pick one of these guys right up and they're just gonna be fine. Yeah. And there's gonna be hundreds more of them. I'm not gonna hurt them or anything by picking them up. They're not gonna be too terribly skittish. Like he runs away, but he's not too terrified like some of the, the Spanish species are. They, once you, move anything they're just gone he's this guy he's already back to eating he didn't really care um uh but they do get semi-large like this is one of the larger ones i have right here and if i put a, my finger up next to it, you can see he's about the size of my fingernail so he's not as large as some of the armadillidium species are but they do get fairly large um and you know, they're not too high of a price either. Uh, I paid, I can't quite remember how I paid for these guys. It was probably a little bit more than some of the Armadillidium species are, like the Armadillidium paraquet or Praca, which is a really cheap one, but they are not as expensive as, let's say, the Jastroy or Gastroy or any of the clown isopods. They're not quite as expensive as those Armadillidium species. Um, and yeah, they're just really beautiful isopod. But as we all know, I say that about all of my species and every other species around. I call them all beautiful because they are. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. I mean, super easy culture to take care of. Um, not much demand as specifics. I mean... You don't want them too wet, you don't want them too dry, but that's with all species. You don't need them to be, I wouldn't say you need them at a certain temperature for them to thrive. I keep them mid-range 
with the rest of my isopods. I keep the room about 75 degrees and I keep uh, over 50% humidity and these guys are thriving as you can see. Uh, you haven't had them long and I've already had to move them into a larger container which we did just a couple weeks back and other than that I'm happy. I'm uh, very happy with this species. So yeah. As you guys can see um, Armadillidium maculatum is quite a beautiful isopod. Um, it definitely has potential in the cleanup crew um, section of the hobby and is more than wonderful to have around. Uh, is just a hobby isopod. Beautiful to look at, great to uh, interact with, and um, prolific, uh, very prolific. So in my opinion, it would be uh, a must-have for any hobbyist. Um, the only downside to it, I guess, would be that they do breed extremely quickly, so you are gonna have to um, upgrade their container size quite rapidly, and then probably split the culture quite frequently as well, unless you're selling quite a lot of them, which uh, some people do. Um, I haven't sold as many as I would like to, but I haven't put them up for sale yet on my, um, my ads or my site that I uh, am going to start up soon. But um, yeah, um, great isopod to have, uh, potential in the hobby, and you know, just beautiful isopod, just like the rest of them. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching this week. I uh, hope you have a great week. Uh, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys again next week. Thanks.